I've got very dark screen you've got. Cool. Hosts, can you please make me co-host? Thank you very much. I wonder if our speaker is here already. Ayesha, are you here? Hi everyone, it's good to see you. Oh, Ayesha is here. We can start um, our session in two minutes. So we give some time to settle in. While settling in, feel free guys to take awareness of your breathing, your body. I wanna be relaxed, but a little bit alert. And then I would love to see your faces. That would be nice. I think a host, you would need to allow people to share their cameras. Hey Daniel, that looks good. You're on the way home, I guess, from work. Hey you. Hi. Uh, yep, are you are on mute, I think. Thank you so much. <laughs> Always the same thing. And I don't know, this is my more than hundreds Zoom facilitation session for unit <laughs> masters. So, <Yeah>. wow. <laughs> okay. Welcome, everyone, to today's session. We're in week four of unit masters program. So you already passed the halfway benchmark. You're still here with us. This is very wonderful because that shows that you know you have dedication to get certified in the unit master's program. So we have today in week four with us Ayesha. And in week four, the focus of this week after we basically learned about what is the internet of value, what is decentralization. In week two, we had a quick view about what is the blockchain ecosystem landscape there's more than just blockchain layer one protocols and so on, right? There's a bunch of different actors that provide different services to the entire ecosystem so that we can buy Ethereum, we can store them somewhere, we can exchange them again. So a lot of people are involved in a lot of different services, organizations. And in week three, we had a look into consensus mechanisms. How do these blockchain ecosystems actually stay secure? What are the different technological methods or mathematical um, methods to do that? Who follows what? And today, in week four, we look into NFT, Metaverse, DeFi. No worries, Ayesha, you don't have to speak about DeFi. That is part of the coursework that our students go through. And then in week five, we Next week, we will speak about stakeholder capitalism and how to bring sustainability into the economic system. And then in week six, in two weeks, final week, we will get a, a chance to learn about the unit way of thinking about token economy. But today, first things first, we're going to speak about the outlook of the metaverse. Let me introduce our wonderful speaker. So Ayesha Mubarak Ali is the co-founder and creative director of Meta Visionaries. Ayesha is an internationally acclaimed visual tech artist, creative director, wearable art designer, researcher, and entrepreneur. She's the founder of Oshi Brownie, which is a mixed media fusion and wearable art initiative. She's currently working as the founder and creative di director there, and she creates digital paintings and art direction work to promote local and international culture through technology intervention to integrate character modeling techniques with fashion. Her current practice explores ways to integrate AI with digital fashion and 3D wearable fusion pieces to examine the emotion mapping ability of AI and human behavior through a futuristic lens. The ongoing project aims to experiment with ideas to produce knowledge beyond human comprehensibility by incorporating traditional with digital techniques. 
to execute projects around the abstract nature of light and space and the future of the human race. So this is a very impressive um, CV and Ayesha is a very wonderful creator um, who will take the time today to run us through what is actually possible in today's world when we think about the metaverse and where does, as we're seeing how things are unfolding now, where does the journey lead for our industry? How does it all relate to Web3? Welcome, Ayesha, and please, the stage is all yours. Hey, Yev, thank you so much, first of all, um, for having me. Uh, this, is, this is such a lovely introduction, and you have such a quiet an audience here. So, um, so glad to be here, and what you're doing is fantastic. So when you, when you said that um, I should join the conversation and we should talk about Metaverse Web3 from this angle of um, Frontier Tech. Yes, I was, uh, you know, quite excited because again, uh, you know, when we talk about all of these things, you know, um, there's so much that's happening. Um, you know, at, at one place there's Web3 and then there are people who are creative. So for them, Web3 means something else. So I think, yes, it's quite important for us to um, dissect all of these things and, and learn, uh, especially the tools and basic concepts, like especially for women, because um, that's where I'm a bit more focused because I'm always talking about, you know, women coming forward um, in the tech space, in things related to the space technology, creative side, you know, having the lead roles. So, so yeah, I think this is very exciting, uh, you, what you're doing and what you're building here, um, this platform, this course. So yeah, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, and also if, if you can allow me uh, to share the screen, that's just better for me to kind of go yep. a bit of the visuals as well while I speak. So it's it's a, it's an aid. <laughs> Let's do that. It should be enabled, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's yeah, it worked. Okay. So so one minute while I just figured this thing out. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. As one of the female leaders in Pakistan, <laughs> really one of the female tech leaders building business and encouraging, mentoring a lot of other women to join into the movement. Yeah, um, yeah, and like yourself, like I really look forward to things which are anywhere near the tech, anywhere near the art side. So, you know, those conversations get me going. And I just um, created a small presentation um, just to kind of go over the things. And because I want the audience which is who is attending here, I don't know if, if the audience is more towards general entrepreneurs, like, uh, but this presentation is more, more for everyone because again it's very direct it's very simple i didn't make it for the artists usually i'm you know uh, talking to more of the uh, you know creative community but this presentation is for anyone who wants to learn um, about the digital identity and self-expression um going forward in the metaverse space in the web3 right um and first things first like you know i start off always talking uh talking about the change right and we are in an era where the change itself is so exponential that you know we can't get a grip of it it's just we're trying to get hold of one thing and it's out of our hands right we're, we're thinking about an idea and it's already out in the market and that's what's uh happening in the web3 space uh that's what we're seeing right one day nft is the hype today everyone is doing it and now nft is way behind we're talking about metaverse we're talking about omniverse we're talking about digital world, worlds and you know how the physical realities are um you know coming in contact with the digital right so um this presentation i'll go through some of the key ideas of that you as an artist, you as a, as a woman entrepreneur maybe, or as a general entrepreneur, as a thinker, um, you can see, you can review the tools, you can see if, if something resonates with you, you can get back to me uh, with questions. So yeah, it's, it's a very candid um, communication, but yeah, I always like having something visually there uh, while I'm speaking, right? Um, so first of all, I would like to, you know, talk about the ident identity itself and why do I say that we want to think of identity through the lens of frontier technologies, right? Um, and I just don't like calling it technology because frontier technologies mean that we're also thinking about the space, like the actual space, right? Not the uh, illusion metaverse space, right? So the space technology, um, the VR, the AR, um, and also a lot of 3D elements as well. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Aisha, could you go on full screen? 
yeah let me okay. figure that out yeah it should be here yeah perfect thank you yeah is this better this is perfect okay yeah so um you know that's why i've written here frontier technologies and you know again the description this was there on my bio like what what is this talk about so this is just that um and yeah like you know what are the things that again my focus since i'm talking here through the lens of my own experience i like um the initiate initiating the talk by referring to women more but feel free to be included you know be you know be part of this conversation i think that self-learning when it comes to the frontier tech web3 all of these things that i just talked about is so important right and some of the terms that everyone should know like i'm not talking about the cliche terms here right like everyone knows today what web3 is okay if you're on linkedin if you're on twitter you must have come across the term nft web3 but what i'm going to um, say to you and one of the point, if you can take away from here, just learn about the term fabrication, simulation, okay, um, design thinking, community management. If you're not familiar about this term, uh, if you're not too much of a user of social media, um, and obviously art, science, and research. Now, why I have added all of these things here because if one of these things kind of resonate with you directly, if you're in that uh, field. Or if you're not, then these are the things that you might need to start thinking about. Because if you're a creator, yes, that directly applies. If you're not, it's fine to just, just Google them and you'll come across your own ways, how to navigate these words. Maybe you want to be a community manager. And again, community means everything in the Web3. So again, that's an interesting thing to for you to kind of look into, right? And then if there are people here who are interested in the art side of the metaverse, there are a few easy tools that everyone should know right even if you're an artist or if you're not i just wanted to add add this in the first slide um just so we set the context and it's easier for us to go to the more complex ideas um but like these are some of the tools which are here and everyone should know them like miro is one tool that i, I always use as an artist when i'm talking to my team i always like having a visual mood board and that's where miro comes in canva which which uh, i'm actually currently using to present so I use it for my presentation, social media designs and stuff. Prezi, Mid Journeys for AI created art. If, if any one of you is interested in AI, art spaces for the metaverse. If you're new to the metaverse, just go and check out what art space is. Um, gravity sketches for those people who want to create within the metaverse, right? Once you have the Oculus set on and you want to you want to experience something while you're creating it, like so it's a co-creation software, which I personally enjoy. And I think it's a step up um, from general digital uh, software, right? So this is basically for anyone who wants to start their journey uh, with the community management, with the art side, with the design side, and they want to just go ahead. So they need some uh, direction, right? So I just added this uh, here for them, okay? Again, this is just the visual representation of the softwares that I just talked about. Um, obviously, two years back, this is where I started my journey from. So again, that's why I've included them. Now, uh, one thing I, I think, even if you're in Web3 or generally as an artist, I personally think about um, when we're talking about art is the semiotics and the, and the conscious consumption because digital identity, which is the topic today, uh, I think everyone needs to think about what their identity means today and what it's going to mean tomorrow, right? Um, and one of the things that influences our identity is the consumption. So the conscious consumption is coming from the unconscious learning that we're doing every day, whether we are at our homes, with our families. Um, you know, this is something that we should all know about if we don't already. And and yeah, like simulation word that I've already discussed, it's it's... Again, it's in the periphery to semiotics and fusion, and I'll talk more about these three things when I go to my art side. Uh, but for now, these are the three terms you should know. And again, if I if I be very uh, in the easier easier words, I would say that these three terms everyone should know because if you're interested in Web three, if you want to be relevant for the future careers, again, these are the terms, right? So the interdisciplinary approach, you know, when it comes to reinterpretations, impact. Um, and education, right? These three terms are relevant for you, okay? 
So the reinvention of symbols, reinterpreting narrative, representing human identity, all of these things apply directly um, for the artist. But again, they have a general meaning as well for, for anyone who wants to think about what, they are, what they're consuming in the day, what kind of media they're looking at and what kind of media they want to produce, right? For the Web3 as well. Um, so yeah, that this, is the, this is that information slide that I personally think that always kind of helps me navigate my own uh, conversations around this topic, right? So I just added this here. And yeah, like a bit of how, if you're, if you're a storyteller, I'm a storyteller, right? Uh, through my visuals, I like telling stories. So it's always about the temporary attention grab that you want to do with your stories again metaverse you know it, it's it's a word that everyone is talking about but actually metaverse is made by the at attention hold so if you can't hold the attention just like it's applied to the films just like it's applied to a good novel right it's applied um in the metaverse itself so so there are temporary uh, attention graphs that you want to add and think about and the permanent story that you want to build. So there has to be a context, right? What is your metaverse trying to do? Um, if your metaverse doesn't have an actual idea, then the identity will be lost. I mean, these days, yes, it will be a bit easier because it's still new. So people, people are still trying to learn, but one day it will become more common, right? So you want to think about your direction. You want to think about what your story is, um, you know, and there, there has to be an emotion trend, relevance, I mean, all of these things goes, goes without saying so. So, so yeah, like those are the things you need to um, think about. And then, um, you know, again, problems and solutions that for the Gen Z, again, you know, at one point we used to think that the metaverse is for the Gen Z because obviously they like playing games, but at today we've seen that adults are using metaverse, right? So yeah, the problems and solutions and the definitions have entirely changed right so again this is something something to think about like we can have networking events in the metaverse we can um host like actual physical events like digital fashion shows i, I myself host digital fashion shows so that's when i started people said that this is not going to make any sense but today it's actually a genre that people are thinking investing in right um so these definitions we have to reinterpret rethink um yeah and again, visibility, vision, impact, relevance, projection, relatability, all of these things are uh, important if you're into uh, the positive imaging, you know, global reach, um, technology, education, interdisciplinary approach. And obviously you have to think about the language of the future because again, metaverse is not just like a land that is unknown, it is made out of all of these things. And yeah, here I've added some of the, you know, other things like role of culture, role of fusion art, um, role of AI, ML, Web3 NFTs, you know, whatever uh, constructs the metaverse itself. And yeah, like, uh, so these are some of the designs that I actually started my work from. Like, uh, you can see a bunch of tech <laughs> integrated on the head, and this was part of the performance um, to talk about the idea of the light pollution. Um, this is where my journey actually started. And now I'm taking my works, my designs, which were physical, uh, into the digital space. So now I'll talk more about how my traditional practice as an artist, as something that happened in like a physical studio, um, is now happening in the metaverse. It's now happening um, in all space, spatial, and a bunch of other places. These are again some of my, I just added this uh, as my initial art, like this is what I used to do three to four years back. So my practice has tremendously changed. This is just to kind of show you where my art is coming from, where is, uh, you know, what's the journey, where, where it's now. So this, um, these are some of the artworks which I did in collaboration with Dr. Tara Ratley, who is the former chief scientist from NASA. And we did these artworks as, as the interpretation of the metaverse, but then also the future. Um, because as you can see, these artworks were done in response to the JWST, James Webb Telescope, you know, when it launched. So this is what we came up with. And, and here, um, the terms that I previously talked to you about, which was semiotics, fusion, um, you know, these and the simulation, right? So these, I'll, I'll now talk about these terms, how I applied those uh, terms here, right? So you can see like semiotics, it's the study of symbols, right? So uh, through symbols, I've tried to explain something, a very surreal kind of work, which 
for me is a concept art to think about the future. And then some parts were generated through mid journey. Again, it's an AI run software. So that helps me uh, come up with the ideas and then finalize my work. But there are limitations to the AI because obviously it's not that advanced. So there are other artistic um, liabilities and tools that an artist can use to kind of enhance that. Um, and thirdly, the vision itself, the idea itself that you know, the mankind uh, is going to have the better resolution, better images. So that was a moment to celebrate. And JWST was launched um, above the orbit too. So that's what I tried to show here. And Dr. Tara was kind enough to give her voiceover and do this collab with me. Another artwork is here, which was also done in response to FIFA and things that are happening in Qatar and what the future looks like for Qatar, right? So another image here that I worked on. And again, these are the images that I'm, by the way, translating into the actual metaverse as we speak. It's a, it's a long process, but these are the concept art. So I, I just wanted to uh, put it here. Another example, uh, I think it's relevant to talk here is, is if anyone here is interested in artificial intelligence, machine learning side of art and how to use it um, for the emotion mapping, then this is one of the project that maybe you can look more into it's on my website. It's on my it's on the beef and dusted website as well. I did this project two years back, and uh, this is about the emotion mapping that you do through the robots, the bots who are wearing the costumes. Um, and these costumes that I designed, they were recycled um, again through the actual objects in my studio to the light, like through the lighter 3D scanning. I took them in, and then. Um, Utilizing this color wheel, which you see here, again, this color wheel was given by this scientist named Project. So using the interdisciplinary approach, what I did was that I, I took a lot of data collection on Facebook, Instagram, um, different platforms. And I saw like the hashtags used and how the word happy was being uh, used, how the word sad was being used and using that hundreds of images like this image in the corner here. Um, it shows the, the level of data collection, like there were 20,000 images and so on, right? And then those images were taken to see whether the colors, like the joy has yellow color and green is of the color of the trust. So I was like, comparing the data like by the scientists and then looking at the social media, what kind of images were shared by people and how are they talking about uh, emotions, right? So emotion mapping was done through the data collection. And then the third thing is um, these designs were done and you could use these designs as an AR filter. If you could see yourself in the you know, camera and that, that tells you if you're 20% sad today, 50% happy. So it was again integrated with the real camera. It was integrated with the real time um, analysis of your face um, and your emotions and uses that data to overlap on you the color uh, of your skin, okay? So uh, it, this was again an example of the tech card, digital identity, what does it mean? Like it raises all these questions, right? Uh, what does it mean to be alive today? Where you're going with your identity? I mean, we all, um, you know, spend more time on internet than in our real lives, right? So these apps are just increasing. So app has become a trap, right? Um, and we are more, exposed to the light of our screens. Now in the metaverse, we have like the Oculus headsets on our head. So I think having those conversations about the light, having those conversations um, about this technology that we're using more and more, you know, these are the ideas that I was trying to address here. And again, the applications use as well, because that takes your data, that takes your facial mapping data. And it's kind of, um, you know, impeding your uh, security, like it's scrutinizing you in some way and you don't even know, like it's collecting your facial data, your emotion, emotional data. Like we don't even know, like we're on Zoom. So what's happening to the data that we're using, right? Um, so yeah, like more and more apps, more and more third party uh, AI things are doing this. And on Facebook, you have this example, like you have this like button, um, you know, now you have more options to react, uh, you know, the emotional reactions before you just had the like button. So again, all of these things are, um, you know, something to think about. And again, it talks about the digital identity in different ways that where we're heading, like we are almost becoming humanized, right? And that's what the art here um, is showing you. This was the happy board, this was the sad board. This was trust, shocking, you know, fear, anger. And again, these are all just interpretations, but then it was done on the actual um, people. Yeah, and then third kind of um, 
you know, these are just, again, the references to some of the art that I showed you previously with the space, with the fusion of the culture. And here again, I wanted to just quickly highlight the semiotics word that I just said. I think when we're thinking about metaverse, we should not get rid of the cultures. And coming back to that idea, I think metaverse should have some level of cultural interpretations. Here, this, this metaverse that I'm designing, this one is for Turkey and their culture. And then this one is a direct reference to the truck part of Pakistan and um, their, you know, the, the vibrant identity that I'm kind of part of. And it's, it's a cultural heritage, but you can always imagine it in a futuristic scenario. So, so all of these are concept arts um, that are working on for the metaverse simultaneously. This one was for India, these two were for India and then yeah, so on. Like, so there are multiple identities that I'm referring to. This one was for third. And again, the semiotics is very important when you talk about metaverse, simulations in semiotics. Uh, I think these are the terms no one talks about, but I think they should become part of our um, conversations more and more. Um, this art on the left side, uh, this is for the mental health awareness. Um, you know, it's again, mapping of the actual tumor cells uh, on top of a cancerous, uh, a person who, who had a cancer. Um, and this was again a reference to the idea of the beauty uh, that we attached to a healthy body. And, you know, we think like if someone has cancer, they should not be photographed or whatever, you know, because they're, again, there's an idea of disease attached. So, so these uh, images that you see, they were done through emotion mapping, they were done through AI integration and the physical objects being translated into the digital. So it was the other way around, right? Uh, and yeah, this, this art book, that's, that's why it's so special to me because again, it's, I wanted to, you know, bring beauty out of the cells and they're, you know, when they're viewed in the microscope under the light, they have a certain uh, tendency of illumination. Um, so again, you know, overlapping thousands of images of cancer and tumors, this is the result that I got. So yeah, for me, I think this, this gives off that idea that, you know, we need to find beauty in, in anything and that's up to us. So, so this project was about that. Um, and the one on the right that you see these golden armor that the women are wearing, again, these were uh, utensils which were from the kitchen and I uh, photographed them and then I took them through the lighter technology in the computers, in the softwares, I turned them into masks. And then these masks, when these uh, models wore, uh, the Snapchat filters could not recognize their face, right? And that was the idea that I wanted to work with, the rebellion to the mass. So here the semiotics, here the rebellion itself became the comment because again, AI, it's all about scrutinizing us. I mean, AI has its benefits, but we have to be mindful about the technology. So this, this artistic project was to comment on that fact and, and to also highlight the women in a new light, right? To give them the power to show them in the in the empowered kind of, uh, you know, image. Uh, so, so that's why I think, again, there's a cultural reference of the utensils itself. What does that mean? Because they're coming from kitchen and, you know, kitchen utensils have a certain connotation when it comes to women and how women are portrayed. So I just wanted to use the same material, but in a different light. Um, and that was the idea here uh, by using these materials. And most of all the other images are there on my website. So if you want to see it's, uh, Again, this project was about uh, Arab culture, abayas, and then putting them in new light. It was about light pollution. And these images, by the way, half of them were, were created by AI and ML. And this is just an, uh, another example of how fusion art, how semiotics can be utilized, can be combined to talk about the culture, to talk about um, different social issues. And then ultimately these ideas can result in the metaverse, right? So it's, it's about a lot of different things. Like if we dissect the web three, it's about AI ML, right? So again, here, the use of AI and ML, ML has uh, allowed me to, to create the background and the jewelry for, the, for these Arab women, right? And that becomes like an avant-garde fashion, which you don't usually see on women. So that was like a, a different kind of portrayal. These are some of my initial sketches that I usually do when I'm coming up with an idea. And this is with the Oshi Brownie, uh, my initiative, and I'm CEO of that. So I usually do these kind of designs. This, this is from my sketchbook, uh, these pages. Yeah, some more. This is the studio where I work and I collect a lot of stuff and then I photograph them. Yeah, some more designs. This was part of the performance. Some other avatars, again, this was done using 
artificial intelligence. This, this was done through Blender, Reillusion, and, and some other software. Obviously, this is a workflow because they are very technical. And yeah, like the digital fashion side, because now I'm translating everything digitally. And these were again done in the studio. Then they were reworked on those designs through a software. So again, this is part of the Oshi Brownie, but I just wanted to add because here I'm talking about all of these softwares that you can utilize if you're interested in, again, more on the art side. <laughs> so this is for those. But yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this was, um, you know, a bit of everything, I would say, like fusion art, AI, ML. If there are any questions, if you want me to elaborate on any specific area, I'm here. But yeah, Yip, uh, thank you so much. I think this would be it. <laughs> Yeah, let's take 10 minutes for Q&A and we already have questions such as from Thomas and everyone else. If you have questions, then kindly write them into the chat. We will read them out or give you the microphone. So maybe first we can give the microphone to Thomas, who has a question regarding the role of female artists within the space. Maybe host, could you give um, Thomas the right to speak? I will read out the question and then maybe Thomas can clarify because it seems like he cannot unmute himself. So what do you think about the role of female artists within the space, especially given the recent controversy of creator royalties in NFTs? Will they be able to hack the metaverse and hence the real world? Like in general, maybe we can take a step back also, Ayesha, and speak about, you know, in which way does metaverse and business models in the metaverse actually create new opportunities for creators and artists in general because some of us in the room might not be very familiar with different ways of value creation in in the metaverse how it works today with nfts for example yeah and avatars uh, because we all know that there's some kind of virtual world and there's an avatar but the underlying tech and how people then generate um, revenues from that is not very clear to many people. Yes, sure. Uh, yeah, yep. So first of all, to answer the question, um, I think, yes, previously the, the areas where women were never the entrepreneurs or the leaders, um, I think now we have the chance with the Web3, one, because it can happen from anywhere around the world, because obviously it's entirely virtual, right? Uh, so yes, women have a better chance, especially in those areas where they can't physically move, they can't go to another country. So those, those are the restrictions. I think it's now easier. Um, secondly, with the equity structures, with the royalties, and again, the word DAO as well, decentralized uh, autonomous organizations, more and more women are coming up. But with these controversies, I mean, uh, you know, I, I've heard them with the NFTs, there were a lot of them like, you know, maybe this project is a scam, like these kind of things are there. Uh, I think you just have to be mindful that, you know, these things at the end of the day, they're just technology. So these are going to have a backlash. These are going to have a bad side to it, just like any other technology, right? So it doesn't have to do with the fact that this is Web3, whether this is NFTs. Yes, it's a new thing. And whenever there's a new uh, technology, there's always um you know the the it's never accepted easily right it's just like when the internet came and everyone was like you know internet is not going to do any good for our children right um so it's just like the same conversation we are in those early days but but i think having said that um this allows us the opportunity to define it define especially the term metaverse how we like right um the projects the third wave which is coming now i think women are going to be very prominent in that like i'm speaking to a lot of people there are so many women out there who are taking initiatives when it comes to the metaverse when it comes to web3 and monetizing it uh, with equal opportunities to for for the equity side if that answers the question yeah the world is how we shape it that's why we have unit masters so that at the early stage of the industry we give equal opportunities for everyone to learn, get inspired, and then take action. In, in that spirit, we have a question from Saloni here. She says, I have started exploring the tech and opportunities in the Web3 space. How can I start off to provide services in the fashion world in Metaverse? What is like, you know, an entry point for people who might already be creators? Yeah. So first of all, find your audience. And I know it's easier said than done because finding the people, it's so hard. Like 
you have to be become part of so many groups but trust me when i say that there is an audience especially on twitter and linkedin okay i won't talk about instagram because i personally haven't found any projects there so i won't say that but instagram is great for your portfolio so do keep instagram in your loop because your gallery your portfolio your work should be there but utilize twitter to to have a general conversation out there like if you if you are looking for a job just say it like post um that and and then reach out to people in dms like not spamming them but but reach out to people in your community i'm sure every one of us is so connected these days that if we know like five good people who are in that space if you can identify them you have to just write a good message where you're being very concise with your motive and that goes for the linkedin as well so do that um uh, and then ask them for a, a meeting and this is basically how you get yourself in there is no other way right you just set up a meeting you tell them a bit about your vision and this is how you get in and there is a lot of work by the way for the creators especially today so um there are a lot of opportunities how would one find the first list of target companies or projects that are interesting you know how do you filter interesting ones from spammy ones what what's your way of doing so you know i would actually answer this in a very different way because i actually never looked for any company i never looked for a project you know and that's a very strange thing to hear but you know what i always did was i always shared my thoughts out in the world okay what i always did was even if i was on instagram because previously i used to be so active on instagram uh, and then i came to linkedin right so i'm i'm quite new uh, when when it comes to the linkedin and navigating its structure but what i always did was that i always just just put out my thoughts whatever i'm making i just put it out whether it's behance whether it's still twitter like i have my social media everywhere i have my twitter account i have my facebook i have my behance my youtube right i even had snapchat at some point but i don't use it anymore so the idea what i'm trying to say is that be very creative and serious about the content that you're creating and putting out so it's not just about your art that you're doing quite well right you have to be the curator of your content you have to put it out in a certain way you have to write about it in a certain way that you know the people who are in the field they're looking for talented people they will get back to you so you don't always have to think about being the person who approaches i mean i said that if you want to approach someone then it's a different thought process it's a different mindset you have to dm continuously you'll message 1000 people and you'll hear back from two okay that's that's the ratio okay but if you want to do the other way around what you do is you you put yourself out there and trust me you'll hear back because there's a lot of work <laughs> yeah thank you so much so we have here eric who wanted to ask a question eric i will ask you to unmute one question for you okay do i have typed my question in the chat there's oh. a simple yes did you see yeah, it please feel free to read it at oh okay okay let me just bring the chat out and read it uh my question has to do with uh, okay i did say uh, how does an art an artist bring a work of art into the blockchain mainstream and how does a piece of art you know and value i'm asking from the lema perspective okay thank you yeah um yeah to answer to that question so so one is that you if you're talking about the, this question from the technical standpoint if you're talking about the process then yes there's a process to mint any art work of art like it doesn't have to be the work of art it can be literally an image of you sipping coffee right it doesn't have to be art for it to be minted and becoming part of the blockchain first okay so anything can become an nft anything can stay on the blockchain forever and that's the literal uh, definition of of an nft right it doesn't have to be artwork for it to be an nft yes if it's an art then just like a a work of art in a museum you know that holds a certain importance if, if the artist is you know someone you look up to is he's renowned then that nft will have importance too it it will have an audience and people would want to invest in that artist right just like a regular setup right so then nft will mean a very different uh 
set of criteria around that work of art. And now, uh, if that work of art is part of a community project, where that is just still an NFT, then again, it, there's a third definition of the NFT because now the NFT will be known for the utilities uh, that are attached to it. And if you're if you're just someone who wants to understand what NFT is, I think this is the best definition that you should look into because then NFT is just like a ticket that you buy for the concert, right? You know that this, uh, this ticket is going to give you the access to that certain concert at a certain time. And, and then that NFT becomes like an access point. And yes, if there's a good visual to that, like, you know, everyone likes good art. So then art is just art for it. Just like, you know, you, you use thousands of images on Instagram. So that is just art, but the NFT is the access point. And I think uh, that kind of answers your question because I, these are the three definitions which are really common and you will kind of confuse them. <laughs> and when we speak about digital identity, NFT and the artwork, can you like lay out for us what, in which relationship do they stand with each other? Like we yeah. saw these beautiful avatars in itself, they are artwork, but now how do they link to a digital identity and what is the underlying um, structure for that text structure? So, um, you know, uh, when we see a lot of NFT projects on the internet, and then this is something that I'm saying for anyone who's interested in NFTs, right? They are like, oh, so suddenly people are investing in NFTs and whatever their NFT is in their wallets, they're adding that as a PFP to their profile images. So now you see their profiles being changed to these avatars, these creations by the artists, right? So what does that mean? Again, that is another form of, how we talk about the digital identity because um you know when this thing started when this this became a trend no one actually knew that this this is the turn that we're going to have that suddenly the pictures that you're buying on the blockchain you'll be using it as a profile picture and i mean we are all very conscious about our profile pictures like what is the image that we're putting out uh, on the profile right is it high resolution what are we doing what are we saying through that it's about our general identity but suddenly when we're using the nfts or these avatars the 3d avatars as our um, profile pictures what this is saying is that one yes we are someone who is in the web3 space Second, yes, we are the investors of that because suddenly your public wallets are transparent. Anyone can see that, oh, you these are the assets that you've bought. So again, it's part of your identity. And people associate the assets, the monetization, the money that comes with the image as part of your identity. So again, this is another definition of digital identity, why people put, are putting out these avatars, these 2D avatars or any kind of image uh, of NFT, um, on their profile so so i think yeah that's the direct relation uh, it's the same psychology like people always think about their profile pictures and uh, with nfts they just want to show off uh, what they have in their wallet i would say yeah it's just our means of expression in in web3 one of our tools on friday like tomorrow we will have a workshop a demo session on digital identity together with unstoppable domains who basically give access to people to own a an identity permanently on on blockchains so everyone welcome to join and there's a little surprise for everyone who joins too so that makes sense bring your friends for to close our session today i want to read out a question from imane i'm not sure if i understand very correctly but i should feel free also to to share just how you understand it we're speaking about ai ethics from an ai aspect ethics perspective, how can we ensure that we can create co-create identities that don't further exclude affected communities? And what, what are our tools to create a zero exclusive, I guess, metaverse? So, so what your question is basically, what are the tools that we can use for an inclusive metaverse? Is that, is that the question? Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, some of the tools that I already mentioned in my presentation, um, I think those are the ones, but like, if, if you if you own an Oculus, then it's way easier because you're actually in the metaverse, right? Um, then you can explore the Play Store of Oculus and that's a different game. But if you're just wanting to learn about the metaverse and how to make it inclusive, then I would say, um, do check out DALI this project again it's about art and metaverse and about uh, ai you know running its spot bots to produce art through imagination 
I think that is something anyone can use if even if you're not a not a creator. Um, you know, we can all imagine, you know, even if we don't have the skills to create, we can all imagine in our heads. And that's where the art is, right? Um, I think this is the very interesting thing about the mid-journey, all these tools, Dali, and uh, there are GPT-3 that is more for the text, textual and uh written written words. Uh, but these are some of the tools which you, if you're interested in design thinking, you're talking about imagining an inclusive metaverse this is where you can start off from uh, and then second thing is um do check out the projects which are doing it in a great way like i would say world of women um boss beauties i mean these are some of the projects that i uh, started off looking at them that they're talking about you know a different angle to how to represent the identity of uh, women right and then nfp is one of the project that is about again transgender is about women uh, and being very inclusive right and it's about different skin tones the collection that i'm currently working on with meta visionaries that's also about uh, you know bringing in the brown skin bringing in the asian representation bringing in the pakistani representation bringing in you know a lot of different cultures which are being ignored right so bringing them back into the conversation because if we can have a more global approach, then things are much more easier. And then it makes more sense than why Web3 exists. Otherwise, if you're not trying to think and tackle any social issue on a larger scale, then what's the idea of inclusivity, right? Um, so I think these are some of the projects that you can look into as well. Perfect. Thank you so much for giving this, us this uplifting. It's so true that each of us can imagine, even when we might not yet know all the tools that we can use to give expression to these imaginations but we are not limited right in in our contribution by creating and also that is i guess very important that you guys are aware of what are the different tools to contribute to to our web3 so that we all shape it together while it's kind of growing thank you very much ayesha and hope to see everyone tomorrow again for week four and then we have two more exciting weeks where we really get into the more economic understanding of, of blockchain technology and Web3. Thanks everyone. Have a good one and follow Ayesha on all of her on all of her social media. You find all the details in the email that we had sent out, the speaker email. And Ayesha, maybe you can send that right now into the chat so then yeah. we can follow uh, so, you right now. Yeah, I can actually um, attach my link tree and my link tree, the top line of my link tree link has all my social media. So if you can, uh, I, I'll add just one link. And that should yes, have perfect. It's here. I'm yeah. just trying to know. So this is my link, all my websites, all my projects. Anyone want to just check them out in detail? It's there. My social media is there. If there are any questions, you guys can reach out to me. I'm very responsive, so <laughs> I'll get back to you. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. Bye.